Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we're on the 10th episode of the Endless Runner series. My voice is really weird right now and I don't know why. Just wanted to throw that out. Sorry for the inconvenience. In this episode, we'll take a look on how to implement a moving background to our game, making it look like it's infinite. First, we'll import our sprites and make the moving background logic. Then we'll add a skinny velocity system, very similar to the one in the previous episode. And talking about last episode, I want to add a feature that I skipped and that is adding a scaling velocity to our yards. I want to make it so that our yards go slower at the start but go faster with time. And we do this to give an extra illusion to our player so it look like we are actually accelerating. The way we are going to accelerate our yards is going to be very similar to the way we do our moving background. So it will be very easy. Ok, and let's start. For the moving background I want to drag in a sprite that I made. This one right here. It doesn't look good and, well it's true it doesn't look good, but it will do for our game. You can download this sprite for free, link in the description, but of course you are more than welcome to make your own. Let's close this and let's drag our background into the scene. And it is huge. I'm actually gonna fine tune this image right now. I'm gonna use some values that I've already tested. You can of course copy these values if you are using the same sprite I'm using. If instead you are using your own sprite, you may want to change these values. Ok, and as you can see it is very long and we also have a bit of margin on the X. That is because of camera shake. We always want to have the option of moving the camera a little bit when we make a background. So we want a bit of margin. If we are to make a camera shake effect like an earthquake or a thunderstorm, we want to have a bit of margin on our background. Next thing, we want to duplicate this background and put a copy at the top. Now, why do we have two backgrounds? Well, we want to have an infinite background. But to do that, of course, we want to cycle a single sprite. And to cycle a single sprite, we actually need two of them, because we don't want a sudden interruption. By having two identical sprites that go at the same speed, when one of them reaches the end, it's gonna teleport back to the starting location. And because they are identical, you won't notice it's happening. So basically like this. Something along these lines. Ok, now let's select both our backgrounds and let's make a new component. And I'm gonna call it move towards. Ok, and in here we want three values. A vector 3 for destination, a vector 3 for position to go back to, and finally a float for our speed. Ok, and now we call the update method. And the syntax for move towards is this one. Ok, and in here we want three values. The current position we are moving from, so transform.position, a position to go to, so our destination, and finally the speed. And because we are not using time delta time, we want to make sure that if a game is paused, so if a time scale is zero, we don't actually move, much like in our spawn manager. Ok, and finally, we want to know when we have reached our destination. So when our transform position is equal to the destination, we just go back to position to go back to. Ok, now let's go back to Unity and assign the values to our inspector. I'm gonna select both backgrounds, and for the values I'm gonna use some fine-tuned values that I've already tried. So if you're using my same sprite, do copy these values. Ok, and uh, let's test this. And as you can see the background is moving, and when one of the parts goes too far down, it goes right back up. And if we play the game, you can see that the background is moving, and we don't notice the change from one background to the other. Here's a problem though, all our stuff just disappeared. Well, it didn't really disappear, it's just that it's invisible. And it's invisible because it's not rendering. That is because of something called order in layer. Basically, when you have two objects that are on the same plane, so two 2D objects are one on top of the other, the camera needs to know which object to show, because technically they are on the same level. If you select our backgrounds, 
You can see in our sprite renderer there is this option, order in layer. We just set this value to minus one, and you can see that now our stuff has reappeared. So let's close our testing, and let's set the values again. And if we hit our boat, we can see that our order in layer is zero. If the order was minus one or minus two, it will appear at the same level or before the background, before or rather underneath the background. One thing we can do is set our boat to be ordered to 1. So when we hit a rock or an octopus or whatever, it's gonna look like our boat has gone on top of it if we collide. Okay, and the other thing you may have thought about is why is the background moving while we are in the shop? And that's of course a valid question, but the reason is that I've liked it better this way. By having the background moving even while we are in the shop, when we start the game, the background is gonna start at a random position or rather at a different position every time. If we make it so that the background starts only when we start the game, then every playthrough is gonna look the same at the start, and I'd rather avoid that. Okay, and for the second part of the video, we're gonna accelerate our background from start to finish. It's gonna be very similar to the way we scaled velocity in the latest episode, so I'm not gonna explain things too much. Basically, we're just gonna have a starting speed, a maximum speed, and a multiplier to increase the speed over time. So let's go back to our move to world script. In here, I'm gonna add a maximum speed, a scaling multiplier, and finally a boolean that tells us whether we are speeding up or not. Then in the update method, we check whether we are spinning or not. And if we are, we increase our speed. Then we want to check if the speed is equal or major to the maximum speed. And if it is, we set the speed to maximum speed to be very precise, and then we change its speeding up to false. And that's it. Of course, we still need a way to change our speeding up to true at the start, and that is with a start script function. If you don't remember, start script is a public void function that we call at the start of a game to make things start. Although usually we use a singleton for a start script function. In this case, we can't use a singleton because we have two instances of move to words. So to make things work, let's go to our start game manager. In here, let's make an array of move to words script. Then we use the for each function to call the start script function on each moving background. Just like so. We can close this and we can test the script in Unity, but first we want to, of course, assign the right values. Remember to select both backgrounds and for the values, remember you can always copy mine. And with these values, the script should go to maximum speed when we reach 100 yards. Of course, it's not perfectly precise, but it should do. Okay, and let's assign the script to our start game manager. Okay, and I made a mistake with the scaling multiplier. This value should be the right one. Okay, let's test the script. You can see that the values are not adding up at the moment, but if we hit play, it starts going up. And we reach maximum speed when we are around 110 yards. So of course we can still make it a bit faster, but that's okay. I mean, these are very fine fine tuning values, so it doesn't really matter now. Of course it will matter, but only when we polish the game, and that is not now. Okay, and for the last part of the episode, I want to make a scaling velocity for our yards. So it's gonna look like we are actually accelerating. So let's go to our yards manager. And in here, we basically want to do the same exact thing that we just did before move to words. So we want a value that is going to multiply to our yards. And right now, we're just using 5 for calculation. We're saying that yards travel are equal plus to 10 delta time times 5. Instead of 5, we're going to use a new value. Then we also want a maximum value for this value, a scaling multiplier, and finally a boolean that tells us whether we have reached maximum velocity or not. These value names look a bit silly, but I think they work. If you have any suggestions to tell me, but other than that, let's keep going. 
In the update function, we want to check whether we are speeding up or not. And if we are, we want to call a new function called speed up. And speed up is going to be a private void function. In here, we increase our YALTS multiplier speed by your YALTS multiplier multiplier. Then we check if our YALTS speed multiplier is major or equal to its max. And if it's so, we set it to the maximum value and we set it speeding up to false. And let's also make it so that if the game is paused, we don't run this function. So we just need to check if the time scale is zero. And if it is, we return. Finally, let's replace our 5 with Yard's speed multiplier. And let's not forget to add to our style script function the is speeding up bool. Ok, now let's go back to the inspector and let's assign some values. And for starting speed I'm gonna say 1, for the final one I'm gonna say 5, and on multiplier I say 1, 0, 0, 0, 3. And that should make us so that we go to maximum speed when we reach 100 and something yards. Let's test this. And you can see that the start or yards are very slow, but they're also speeding up. And as you can see, we reach maximum speed at 108 yards. So I would say that it works. You may think that it's wrong to have different values go to the maximum speed at different intervals, but at least for now it's fine. We don't really care about it being perfect. Also, it's really hard to notice whether the values are set to the maximum speed at the same time or not. And of course, it just thinks that you can polish later on. We don't really need it to be perfect right now. Let's close this and we are done for this episode. It's kind of a shorter one, but definitely something that you need. And with this simple technique, our game looks a lot better. If you have any doubts or suggestions, tell me in the comments. And in the next episode, we're gonna do a very simple localization system. I say simple because it's not very professional, as is, it's not very good if you work in a team. But if you are an indie developer and you're working on a game without a lot of dialogues, then it will be more than fine. Also, if you want to know how the finished game will look like, do check my game Boat Venture. It's free on the Play Store for Android devices 9+. Alright, see you in the next video.